This news is funded by viewers like you. Please support our work at democracynow.org slash give. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Nermeen Sheikh. As rights groups warn, dehumanizing rhetoric around Israel's U.S.-backed war on Gaza has put the lives of Muslims and Arabs in the U.S. at risk. We look now at a Senate Judiciary Committee hearing Tuesday on the tide of hate crimes in America. Committee Chair Democratic Senator Dick Durbin of Illinois called the hearing. His constituent, Hanan Shaheen, sat in the front row. Her six-year-old son, Wadie Al-Fayoum, was stabbed to death in an anti-Muslim hate crime by her landlord in a Chicago suburb in October. Shaheen herself was also stabbed at least 12 times. Durban has introduced a resolution honoring Wadie, along with Illinois Congresswoman Delia Ramirez, who will join us in a minute to discuss growing support for the Wadia Act. We'll also be joined by the Arab American witness at Tuesday's hearing, who faced hostile questions from Republicans, Maya Berry, executive director of the Arab American Institute. But first, let's go to Republican Senator John Kennedy questioning Berry. You support Hamas, do you not? I, Senator, oddly enough, I'm going to say thank you for that question, because it demonstrates the purpose of our hearing today in a very let's, effective way. Let's start first way. with a yes or no. Hamas is a foreign terrorist organization that I do not support. But you asking the executive director of the Arab American Institute that question very much puts the focus on the issue of okay. hate in our country. Well, well I, got, I got your answer, and I appreciate it. What is the... Uh, you, you support Hezbollah, too, don't you? <laughs> Again, I, I find this line of questioning extraordinarily disappointing, Is that Senator. A no? That y or you, yes. have, you have Arab American constituents that you represent but, but in your a, great uh, state. Yes, ma'am, I understand that, but is, my time's limited and I apologize, but is that a yes or a no? yes or no question to do I support Hezbollah? The answer is I don't support violence, whether it's Hezbollah, Hamas, or any other entity you, that invokes it. You can't it. So bring no, yourself sir. to say no, can you? No, I can say no. I can say yes. But what I haven't. can say is you just your can't line make of questioning. Do, do, do you Senator. support or oppose Iran <laughs> and their hatred of Jews? Again, I'm going to emphasize, Iran, Hezbollah, Hamas, none of them is going to, you, this you discussion. You can't bring yourself to say no, can Sir, you? I don't support. It's real simple. Excuse me, I'm going to, uh, if I may, no, no, as a Muslim no. woman, as a Muslim woman, sir, I'm going to tell you I do I, not support Iran. But what I will tell you, you is that uh, this conversation. I'm running out of time. I'm okay. sorry. Um, you, uh, you called our decision Please. to cut funding. You called our decision to cut fund. Well, first, what's the United Nations Relief and Works Agency? It's uh, UNRWA, which is yeah. the institution that exists to provide uh, services and aid to the nearly six million Palestinian refugees. And, and you called our, our decision to cut funding for them, quote, an incredible moral failure, close quote. That is absolutely correct. But again, I would suggest that conversation and is we about did, foreign we policy. We did that because... Nine UNRWA staff members were fired for, for actually helping Hamas on October 7th. Isn't that the case? I, I don't believe that that's correct in terms Let me ask you please. one more time. You support Hamas, don't you? <laughs> you Sir. support UNRWA and Hamas, don't you? Sir. Please. I... I think it's exceptionally disappointing that you're looking at an Arab American witness before you and saying you support Hamas. You know what's disappointing to me? I do not you support can't Hamas. Bring yourself I do to not say support Hamas. You don't or support any... UNRWA. You don't support Hamas. You don't I was very clear in my support for Hezbollah, UNRWA. And you don't I support oppose... Iran. You should hide your head in a bag. You should hide your head in a bag. Republican Senator John Kennedy of Louisiana uh, told Maya Berry, executive director of the Arab American Institute, at Tuesday's Senate hearing on hate crimes. Maya Berry joins us now in our New York studio and in the Cannon Rotunda in Washington, D.C. We're joined by Congressmember Delia Ramirez of Illinois. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! Maya Berry, um, you are now the head of the uh, Arab American Institute. Uh, 
uh, during 9-11, you were the legislative director of the minority whip uh, Congress member David Bonnier. You're well known on Capitol Hill. Uh, can you talk about what Kennedy said to you and to talk about the other two witnesses as well? It's difficult to talk about what Senator Kennedy said to me, because I still, sitting here in front of you, actually do not know what he meant when he said, put a bag over your head. I worry about the senator's 31,000-plus Arab American constituents and the rest of the constituents he represents from Louisiana. Um, that kind of bigotry uh, and hatred is, is difficult to hear from anyone, but to actually experience it at a hate crime hearing from a sitting member of, of this institution was, was pretty extraordinary. The hearing itself, but you're right to point this out, is incredibly important to do. We have been year after year after year breaking records for the number of hate crimes in our country, a trajectory that's increased since the 2015 year, which tied with the 2016 president, presidential election. And the fact that the hearing that was supposed to cover the issue of hate crime and how to formulate a better response uh, was derailed by a group of, of senators who chose to have the conversation about a political agenda they wanted to advance with regards to Israel um, and instead use it as an opportunity to further dehumanize people. It's not how we fight anti-Semitism and it's certainly not how we fight anti-Arab racism. And Maya Berry, could you speak specifically about the increase in hate crimes from 2023 to 2024, uh, in other words, following uh, uh, the October 7th attacks and then the, the, the war, the assault on Gaza. Yeah, th there's been a sense, obviously, anecdotally, and, and looking at specific news accounts, that there's been an increase. One of the things that we did in preparation for the hearing is that we actually pulled all of the 2023 data from 27 states plus the District of Columbia. And we did that because the federal data on hate crime has not been released yet for 2023. That won't be coming out until a bit later. And we found exactly what we thought which is that there's been an extraordinary increase of hate targeting both the Arab American and the Jewish American community. In the case of the Jewish American community, just over 1,000 to more than 2,000. In the case of Arab Americans, it went from just over 100 to 180. Um, all of that is to say, by the way, one of the most important things to understand about hate crime data is the massive underreporting problem that exists. Based on the, the Bureau of Justice Statistics at the Department of Justice, only about 1% of hate crimes are actually reported. So those numbers tell us that yes, there's a significant problem, but it's it's significantly worse than that. And then just to point out the post-October numbers, that's where you saw at least half of both those crimes. And talk about uh, Kenneth Stern, who was another witness, uh, who is director of the Bard Center for the Study of Hate. Yeah, Professor Stern was there uh, specifically because I think there was an anticipation that this conversation might delve into the idea of debating what anti-Semitism is or isn't. Um, he is actually the author of um, the IRA definition, the National Holocaust Remembrance Alliance definition of anti-Semitism, that he specifically wrote for the purposes of data collection out side of the United States primarily uh, to provide guidance. Um, the definition is is designed um, and written to introduce the idea of Israel and Israel w issues into um, conflating it with the very real problem of anti-Semitism that exists. So the problem has been, it's we need to talk about anti-Semitism. We must not conflate it with anti-Israel criticism or criticism of Zionism. Um, and that you know he spent. Uh, he spent some considerable time trying to educate the senators on the importance of not doing that and the harm that it can cause to communities. Well, what do you think, Maya, what do you think needs to be done uh, in, in order to make uh government more responsible. I mean, what, what the Republicans did, of course, the way they questioned you was completely outrageous. Uh, but even beyond that, uh, uh, you know, uh, taking that out of the picture, what is missing from the way in which the state, uh, the federal government and also state governments respond to this kind of violence? I think that's the question, uh, and, and incredibly important to keep elevating. Part of how policy is set is that you're asking the right questions and that it's informed by data. Um, and one of the things that has to happen in this process is actually what happened at the hearing, meaning the convening the hearing to have this discussion so we elevate the issue in the crisis of hate that we're in. Um, we strongly believe that part of that is uh, requiring mandatory hate crime reporting, which means that every municipality that receives federal funding uh, should have to report on hate crime. We're not there yet. The introduction of the Khaled Jabara and Heather Heyer No Hate Act was a vehicle to improve hate crime data collection and reporting. Um, and I think there's more that can be done in that space. But the, but the point is we must um, have our government focus on the actual problem as opposed to distractions from it, which do not advance safety for anyone. 
I wanted to bring Delia Ramirez into this conversation, uh, who is standing in Congress right now in Washington, D.C., in the Cannon Rotunda. Um, in the front row of this hearing, uh, your uh, constituent, uh, Senator Durbin's constituent, since he's the head of the committee and he is also uh, the Illinois senator, um, introduced her, Hanan Shaheen, the mother of Wadia Al-Fayoumi, the six-year-old boy, uh, who Palestinian child, who was killed by uh, their landlord. Can you explain what happened then in October and what you've done in introducing your bill around hate crimes, how the Democrats dealt with this grieving mother who herself was knifed repeatedly, mm -hmm. and um, how the Republicans dealt with her. Yeah. Look, I, I'm, I was listening to what uh, Senator Kennedy said, and it really uh, was difficult for me not to have an out-of-body experience and reaction to what he did. Um, Anand Shaheen and Wadea Fayumi were constituents of Congresswoman Underwood just a few minutes from my district. And the, when the conversation Senator Dick Durbin and I had about finally having a hearing that actually since October 7th talked about the rise of Islamophobia, anti-Palestinian hate, and anti-Semitism, and the impact that it has in our communities, it was with Wadea and his mother's face in mind. And the idea that a hearing that was supposed to be about educating us on what this impact is around the country, becoming the perfect example of what elected officials do and how they spew the hate that killed Wadea Fahumi was heartbreaking. But also, I think to Maya's point, was exactly what we're talking about. What Senator Kennedy did in that hearing the consequences of his horrible bigotry and hate have real consequences in the Arab community, in the Palestinian community, in other communities, and it makes us all less safe. The Wadea resolution is about honoring the life of a little boy that was stabbed 26 times by his landlord, because Wadea and his mother are Palestinian. And the resolution was about honoring his life and also saying we have to end the bigotry and we have to end the spewing hate and, and, and the words that are used by elected officials and the media. That is what this resolution was about. And actually, it's what inspired Senator Durbin to have this hearing on the rise of hate crimes. What Senator Kennedy did should have real consequences. Here's what I'm telling you. You can't come into the House floor or the Senate chamber without a tie. You have to pay a fine. You can't use a camera while you're on the floor. You'll get fined. But you can treat a witness, treat Maya the way that Kennedy treated Maya and have no consequences. To me, that is the biggest ethics violation and an example of elected officials not being accountable to their people. And what he did should have consequences. And I'm going to look into what we could be doing to ensure that no elected official use a hearing room to further spew the hate that we're seeing and the rise of hate crimes around the country. As we talk about the issue of hate, uh, Donald Trump said he is heading to Springfield, Ohio. Um, where he and his vice presidential running mate, now a sitting senator, Ohio Senator J.D. Vance, have falsely accused um, the Haitian community of eating pets. It is something that has generated enormous laughter, derision, but much more importantly, horror because of what's happening in the streets of Springfield. State troopers marching to the streets, kids afraid to go to school, bomb threats at schools, at hospitals. You yourself, uh, Delia Ramirez, are an immigrant, an immigrant from Guatemala. If you can talk about this attack on the immigrant community and what it means, how it's reverberating for you as well. Let me start by saying that what is happening in Springfield, Ohio, is Donald Trump's fault, all of it. The idea that you make immigrants less than human, which is exactly what his strategy has been the entire time since he started his campaign 
eight years ago. This man is intentionally creating ways and using words and accusations to make immigrants less than human. Haitian immigrants, black immigrants. I mean, if that is not racism and bigotry, and if you can support this man, then it makes me question if you're a racist and a bigot as well. The people of Springfield have said, leave us alone. Haitian immigrants in this town are boosting our economy. Its own mayor, the city manager, the entire community has said, enough is enough. You, Donald Trump, is bringing hate to our community. You, Donald Trump, is making us less safe. You, Donald Trump, is impacting our economy because now we're having to spend all this money on safety because of what he did. Shame on Donald Trump. Donald Trump, the last thing he should be doing is going to Springfield, Ohio. What he should be doing is asking himself, who am I and why do I hate people so much? And finally, um, though I'm not quoting his words directly, he just said in a town hall forum, he'll go to Springfield, but who knows if he'll make it out. We're going to leave it there. I want to thank you so much, uh, Illinois Congress member Delia Ramirez, um, speaking to us from Washington, D.C., in the Cannon Rotunda. And thank you to Maya Berry, executive director of the Arab American Institute. We thank you for both being with us. Democracy Now! is funded by viewers like you. Please give today at democracynow.org slash give.